Welcome back to True Rhymes. Tonight's episode is all about Jack and Jill. Of course, who the hell goes up a hill to go to a well? I don't know, but you're going to find out tonight what was really going on. So I thought, as a, as a start off, we might as well recap and read you Jack and Jill. So just in case you don't remember how it goes. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Up Jack got and down he trot as fast as he could camper. He went to bed and covered his head with vinegar and brown paper. Now I don't know whether that was actually a remedy for broken heads, but anyway, apparently it was. There is about four versions of this blooming thing that could possibly be. The one that I thought was rather interesting for a start was about Louis the Sixteenth and his infamous girlfriend Mary Antoinette, and it's actually talking about the fact that they went up the hill, obviously, which was the place where they cut people's heads off, and his head come tumbling down the hill, and she wasn't far after when they cut her head off on the guillotine. The French folk were not real friendly to their nobility sometimes. It was just a little awkward if you had your head cut off. I don't know whether that was something about doing landing in a basket. I can't remember how that went. But I'm not really fond of that version, so I thought we'd go for number two. Number two is a story about a lovely young couple in about the, not quite the 1700s, but late 1600s. And that was a lovely young couple. And of course, if you've ever, if you happen to grow up in a small town, you would know the prying eyes of the old ladies and the gossip and the nonsense that went on. So this was a couple of young lovers and they would sneak off up a hill and so they could get up to, you know, what lovers do. Apparently the story goes that young Jill got herself pregnant, and which was all fine, but the problem was poor Jack, on the way back from down the hill, bloody got a rock on the back of his head and got himself killed, which is pretty crap. And then just to add misery to insult, Jill died having the baby, so hell, I don't know what that was trying to tell people, but it does not sound promising, so I'm just going to skip over that because that was just a bit sad and miserable, so let's not worry about that particular part. The one that I like the best, though, this is, well, actually, there's two that I really like the best, which is the last two. One that I reckon is kind of cool is actually talking about our old friend, King Charles I, which is actually about... Back in the day, I don't know if you were watching last week, we were talking about how he was implementing his taxes to support his lavish lifestyle. The government of the day would not support his increases in taxes. So what he decided to do was reduce the size of the alcohol that the peasants could buy. So back when you went down the pub in the 1600s, you'd ask for a pint of beer, or you'd ask for a half pint, which was a jack, and a third of a pint was a jill. And apparently, in his wisdom, he decided that he was going to reduce all those quarters down. So a pint became a jack, which was a half pint, and a third pint was a quarter of a pint, so which was what our equivalent of our pony today, because your size of your drink got reduced. So there you were, trying to bloody have a half a pint, which should have been a jack, but that was actually a jill. And so they were rather pissed off, so they were just going, what the hell? And of course, so jack got reduced. And Jill came tumbling after, so she was like bloody halved again, I suppose. So I'm not really sure what the hell is a half of a half, half of a third, I don't know. Anyway, I thought that was kind of crap. Can you imagine just how furious you would be if you were in the pub and you'd order a half pint of beer and it cost you the same as a little butcher of beer? I reckon it's no wonder they cut that king's head off. Wasn't too long down the road, you know, like you get a bit of a riot going on if you can't get drunk. And the last version is much sweeter. And this is a little bit earlier on. This is about the 1500s. And this is from our Norwegian brothers and sisters, which I think they had a very sweet idea. And their story goes that Jack and Jill was actually a story about a young couple that were actually going up a hill. Back in those days, they, their wells weren't so deep. So they had their pail on a stick, so you, like a long pole, I guess, with a hook and a bucket on the end, and so you dip that into the well and you'd get your water out. But Jack and Jill were getting the water out, and the moon god decided that they were quite a lovely young couple, so he took them up to the moon. And so when you look at the moon, you can see Jack and Jill with their pail on the end of a stick, and that's 
what they decided was that, you know, when you look at the moon and you see all those different pictures up there, bit like when you talk about the man and the moon, or with your Wallace and Gromit, you talk about like a moon being made of cheese and they just got in some sort of kick ass rocket ship and went up there to have a feed. But anyway, that's a whole nother genre and a different all ball game altogether. I thought that was a rather sweet little thing. So here we are, we get all excited about the Vikings, you know, chopping and blue and all sorts of weird shit that they did through the generations but hell they had at least they had a nice story for jack and jill anyway there you go that's four versions of jack and jill that i've researched now this is not extensive research by any means and i'm sure if you want to get involved subscribe click like comment send us some information and who the hell knows if you know some more stories or you got some ideas of what we should research or what we should look into get involved